Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to show you how you can bring in external graphics into Flyout for the purposes of acting as kind of a blueprint or a template to build your aircraft. And the first thing you're going to need to do, of course, is to locate an image that you can use for the purposes of your blueprint. But before we do that, now there's just one thing you want to note real quick. If I were to click on this guy right now, you'll notice his local position is 0, 0, 0. You'll notice his local rotation is 0, 0, 0. The reason I say that now is because I'm going to forget later. But what you probably observe is these little squares everywhere. Each one of those squares represents one square meter. The reason that's going to be really, really important to us is because when we go to line up the size of our actual aircraft, we're going to have to actually design it so that it matches that particular scale. So um, what we're going to do first is go grab ourselves an image. Now, there's a bunch of different resources you can utilize for this. Um, or there's actually, you can just go do a Google image search, type in the thing you want, and just talk, kind of press this. I'm on the blueprints today. I'm not advertising for these guys. I'm not even going to comment. But um, the cool thing here is I have plenty of things to pick from here. Uh, let's see here. I have a B36. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, not terrible. I don't like this rotation. That means there's more work for us later. Let's uh, try this one out here. Uh, it's missing pieces. That's not going to work for me here. Let's try this one. Um, that one's not even lying properly. It's not going to go so well for me. Let's try this one right here. Oh, well, hello there. That's not bad. Um, that's actually pretty good. It also gives us a bottom view, which a lot of drawings do not give us. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Let's see what we have next. It's probably the same one I just opened a second ago. We'll try B36A, which is the propeller driven. Okay. This might be a keeper because it has a built-in scale here that makes our life much, much simpler. Uh, let's take a look at the D model here. Uh, the D model, D model. Should have some jet engines hanging off of it. Um, not terrible. It's usable. It's usable. Uh, let's see here. We'll probably put these in the order in which I actually think I'll use them. Uh, this one's right out. Uh, that was pretty good. That's uh, probably going to be my winner here. And obviously, if you wanted a specific version, we could do it that way. Ew, that one's right out. And let's go try our final one here. And uh, this one would require a little bit of post-processing on us. The one thing I like about this one that we didn't see in a lot of the others is it also gives us a bottom view here, which makes it a little bit simpler for us. But for me, um, it's going to be one of these two. I'll probably pick the harder of the two just for my example purposes. Yeah, let's pick the harder of the two. So I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to do a quick little save image as. I'm going to go out, dump it over to my desktop real quick. That's perfectly fine. You must use PN files. If you don't have that ability, you're actually going to have to grab it. So let's head back over to the sim real quick here. I'm going to press over here, click on the blueprints button, and click on add blueprint. Now all I have to do is navigate to where my folder is, press the select button, and there is our airplane. Now some people immediately will say, well, we know how many pixels it is per meter. Uh, why don't we just do the calculation off of that and do the division, and use Photoshop to measure the pixels? Ugh, too much work. The way I actually like to do it is a couple of different methods. One thing what I'll do is I'll actually measure from the nose of the plane to the tail of the plane, know the meters and tweak it. Or since we already have a built-in scale, we might as well be lazy. So what I'm going to do is grab my measurement tool here, and I'm going to go ahead and make this visible so we can see it. I'm just going to pull this to the side real quick, because once we know the scale, most of the rest of the work here is going to be pretty easy for us. Now running over to the scale, I notice the scale is a 10 meter scale, which works great. Because when I turn this one on, all I have to do is I'll flip this thing over to a minus 10 meters. And we can do uh, an offset, of course, so that it is uh, in this direction as well. Forget how much my offset was, but we can actually turn both these on at the same time so you can see what we have here. So let's see here. My offset, uh, let's see here. We're going to do, uh, what do we say was that other one real quickly? Turn that sucker on. That looks pretty good to me. That's a minus 5. I always forget it's minus 5 in that direction. Minus 5, which means that this one's also going to be 5. But I need a, what did I say, 20 meters? Let's take a look here. Oh, we said 10 meters. So I'm just going to call that minus 10 meters. And one of the things you always have fun with is uh, trying to get these numbers to work correctly. So let's go ahead and view that. Uh, that's uh, 10 meters in that direction. Sweet. So that means we need to go from here to here. Basically, uh, these little boxes right here that are going to be filling it up. Another strategy that works really, really well, if you just zero this out, zero this out, and set this to minus 10, uh, you can have a really fun little trick here where by setting it to minus, if you can get the negative in front of it, that is, you now can just put it from where he's sitting all the way to that position. So now we have the fun part, and that's going to be manipulating the blueprint itself. So I'm going to open up the blueprint, click this one real quick, and what we can do is we can drag these arrows around now until we get relatively close to our scale. Now let's go ahead and drag that scale. Ooh, ooh, ew, helps if you actually drag the right thing here. So let's drag that up, and you can see right now that we are actually a little big. Now the cool thing is, uh, we all did a fun time in math back in school, but the good news is we can work off this. So one of the things I know is um, this is supposed to be 10 meters, which means the end of the scale here should be at the 10 meter point. But what I see instead is is at the seven meter point. So that means we are just 70%, um, well, 30% too big. 
the good news here is if I look at this thing, this is scale, I can actually come in here now and now change that so that it works. So we know this is roughly going to be seven. So let's see what happens when we bring this down now. And once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can move this one over. Beautiful. Once again, I grabbed the wrong one, but eh, that's going to happen to you too. Don't worry about it too much. So let's see how close we are. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down here and I'm going to go snuggle it down here. And I can see that when I look straight down, orthographic projection, by the way, is your friend. And one of the buttons you can press is you can actually hit the nine key and get it nice and tight there. So I can see very clearly that our estimate was actually really, really, really close. Uh, we're actually off by just a teeny tiny bit here. And again, trying to get the exact, we're working with the drawings and stuff here. But we can see that we're supposed to be at this point and we're still off by, that's probably about, I don't know, 10 to 20, kind of a thing like that. So, so let's try 6.8, 6.8. And then we'll just do our quick little adjustment one more time. And again, orthographic projection by hitting the five key is your best friend here. Now, what I'm starting to see is almost perfection. As a matter of fact, if we zoom out just a little bit, you can see that we are just a little tiny bit too big here. So uh, 6.75, 6.75, enter. Uh, let's go ahead and adjust this real quickly and check it. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You can see very, very clearly that we're almost just basically the thick part of that line is now perfectly on that line, and the thick part of that line is on that line. So that now means we have our scale set correctly. The magical number today was 6.75, and it'll be different by drawing, by the way. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head. So that was the easy part. Um, now for the fun part, and that's getting everything else set up. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna to try to line this drawing in such a way that it is perfectly centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the number seven on my keyboard, which is going to be switching me over. Let me shut off this one so we don't get that one confused. I'm pressing the number seven on my keyboard. And now what that's gonna do for me is it's gonna give me this kind of top down view. And by pressing five, I can switch between orthographic and perspective projection. So let's go ahead back over here. So now we gotta do the finagling. And now one of the things I can see very clearly here, and again, when you're working on scales like this, this is much more challenging, is I can see that that blue line is not perfectly centered. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, I can see I can actually come over just a tiny bit more to my left and basically be perfect here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Ah, look at how sweet that is. It goes right down the middle. A lot of times you get lucky and there's a thick part of the airplane where we can just see where it is and we can go ahead and just grab that directly. So here we are. Uh, we are now perfectly aligned in this view, but we're not. The one problem, and I really wish they would change this, is the fact that our cockpit is nowhere near the cockpit. Yes, uh, you theoretically could, um, no, don't do that, please. Instead, what we have to do is we have to actually align our pilot to where he's actually going to be flying from. So for our case, uh, we're B-36. I'll go ahead and switch back to perspective mode so I don't make anybody dizzy here. So we know we're going to be sitting somewhere about here. Uh, getting this initial thing correct is uh, really, really important to us because we're going to have to fit with it later. But you can see I'm perfectly happy with that. Now we're going to do the magic. So I'm going to go back up here. I'll go back to blueprints. I'm going to click on add blueprint and select my same blueprint. Now that same blueprint has the wrong scale, but remember what we did a minute ago? Yeah, we took the time to go ahead and get that scale perfect. So now that that's been set, if I go back to this one and go to this one, 6.75, if I go back to my new one, edit this one, of course I can change the opacity a little bit, 6.75, it is now the same scale. Now here's where the real magic starts to happen. What I'm gonna do is go up to rotation and um, I can go actually set this to whatever rotation I need. Keep in mind, this is basically the way we wanna be facing. So this actually works well to us. But now I'm no longer aligning that drawing. I'm actually aligning the drawing down here at the bottom. But the good news is the people who drew this actually used a proper multi view projection, which means all we have to do is now line up that front edge. Now, of course, uh, lining up that front edge is uh, one of those things where it's much, much easier said than done kind of a thing. However, if you remember on our previous one, we've already lined up that edge. Control C, return back, control V. Voila. We are now perfectly aligned up because I set those both up. If you don't believe me, do orthographic. Orthographic, man, my CAD teacher would be mad for me. But if you look at this, you can see that uh, there's no phase when we look directly above that, which means we did it correctly. So now all we have to do, of course, is align up this drawing properly. So I'm gonna grab this sucker right here. I'm just gonna push it just like that. And you can see that it is more or less perfect uh, right where it needs to be. Now you're of course saying, oh man, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've already goofed. Uh, that's the side view. It is, which is why we're going to rotate it. Now, I always have a 50-50 shot of getting the correct axis, and I get it wrong every time. So I don't know why I bother. It's not really 50-50. But what we've done now is um, we're already aligned in the front edge. But when I drag up this edge now, I'm actually in a position now where I'm already pre-lined up with that corner so that I already have the correct positioning for actually modeling the side of my aircraft. 
Now, the reason this is so important to us is that when we are working with this, let me go ahead and grab that and drag that over here. All right, this looks a little bit better. Um, now that I've got that view, it actually makes it really, really easy to uh, get an idea of the 3D nature of this particular aircraft and kind of how it puts together. Uh, I would not be surprised if one day we actually have the ability to uh, basically import these things and have an AI sort of generate it for us. Uh, let's see, my X offset should be zero uh, because, of course, um, we're perfectly lined up. So now you can see my 3D aircraft is actually starting to take on shape of its own. The other thing is I have to say that pilot is perfectly positioned. I'm really happy with the height of that. So when I go to model that, I'm not going to have any issues. Now, what a lot of people will do is you see the little pitot tube right there. It's actually possible to move that. And the way we would do that is actually adopt our side view here, uh, the in perspective view. And you can see my pitot tube is just slightly, slightly, slightly high. So what we can do now is we can actually slightly lower this so that it exactly lines up. So when I look at it from the side, it actually is all wet at a level, which now means my pitot tube, even though it's two 2D drawings, is more or less a perfectly lined up. It's never going to be exactly perfect. It's going to be pretty darn close. and It's going to be more than accurate enough for the different work that we're going to be doing to it. So those are two of our views. Ready for the fun one? <laughs> here we go. So what I'm gonna do is add blueprints again. I'm gonna grab this uh, lovely peacemaker here, press that button right there. And now we need to realign it. If you remember that number we copy pasted, enter and it's already pre-aligned. Isn't that nice? So uh, what we have to do now, of course, is I uh, do the front of view. And uh, this one's always kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, the reason being, of course, and I think I put the wrong view on there. Let me go double check. No, I did that right, Z value is correct. 270, 90, oh, that's right. It's gonna be at a different angle. I'm not worried about it. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take a look at uh, how to get the front. Now the front is a little awkward and uh, you'll see what I mean. And uh, you have to be really careful when you're working with uh, front views uh, because a lot of times, it'll... oh, I know what we forgot to do. Oh man, why weren't you screaming at my screen louder? I should have heard you. <laughs> now it's perfect. Uh, the big thing with front views, of course, is uh, when we're doing a front view is we have to align it in the front. However, many front views are actually the incorrect scale. I cannot say this enough, but your front view may not be the proper scale for the drawing you're actually drawing. Uh, one of the safe ways to check that, by the way, is we can measure this and then measure this to confirm that it is accurate. So what I need to do now is I need to align it so it is set up correctly. Now, here's the fun part. If I do a 90 right here, well, that's lovely. Uh, what did that do there? And uh, it gave me a, a little fun view here. If I do 180 right here, you can see I'm way off on the side there. If I do minus 90 here, you'll see that it just puts me at a funny angle again. Of course, if I rotate that 90 degrees, if you take a look now, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that we have ourselves a lovely front view. So now all we have to do is align it. Now the front view, like I said, is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, what I like to do with the front view is I like to position myself perfectly along this one. And then what I'll do is I'll actually tug this downwards and I'll basically bring it down onto it. Remember that fancy little pitot tube that I was mentioning earlier? We can actually come down to this little blue line here and then we can use that as a point of reference when we're trying to line it up. Remember that we set the pitot tube so that it would be right on that axis. So now while we're basically on that axis, it's just a matter of zooming out a little tiny bit and then bringing the nose of the plane over so that it is exactly in the same position that we have our friendly little pilot there just like that. So now if I come back here, you'll probably observe the fact that my front view now intersects quite nicely with my other views. Now, if you wanted to get a little silly, what you could actually do is you could bring this view forward so that it actually neatly aligns with the Z axis. If I press enter here, we now have our pilot as our center point in existence. Now, when you look at that, it's like, oh man, that is gorgeous. Look at how nice of a job we did with that. So one of the cool things we can do with blueprints, of course, is uh, now we can use them as a basis for the purposes of drawing our aircraft. Uh, one of the big pieces of advice I will give you to that effect is to go ahead and use your numpad keys. And then all you have to do is press five for orthographic projection. And now when you do that, it's going to give you one of these at a time, which makes it wicked easy. So now if I press one on the numpad, I got the front view. If I press three on the numpad, it's gonna give me the side view. Of course, if I press uh, nine on the top pad, it's gonna give me the top view as well. We can actually tip along the side and you can even rotate it if you're a person who likes to work from the side. You can also rotate this too, but um, like I said, you're gonna have absolute chaos. One other thing I wanna point out too is when you're working with blueprints, one of the cool things you can do is control the opacity. So if you wanna make this a lot thinner when you start actually working with it, you can just do that directly. So like I can make these quite a bit thinner here like this. And again, by thin, I mean transparent. And you can see just how effectively I can basically recreate this unbelievably awesome airplane uh, just by basically grabbing all those blueprint components and then modeling it. Now, what some people do at this point is they say, well, this is a lovely piece of work. How would I actually go about modeling the fuselage? There's a lot of work here. It's really not that bad. So all we have to do really is uh, just grab our fuselage piece, make sure you shut off symmetry unless there's a reason why you need it for this particular person. And then what you can do is you can just come right over here and then click on that to kind of kick off the process. Now, the reason this is so cool is uh, now we can go ahead and let me go ahead and uh, take advantage of my orthographic projection here. Now all we have to do is we just line up our view so that it is perfectly straight. 
And you can actually see here, if I tilt it just a teeny tiny bit, how long we're not all at center there. Come up here, zero, 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 just like that. And you can see now all we have to do is worry about manipulating ourselves in the vertical axis here. We can basically come down here just a little bit. I can see that my front view is not perfectly centered. That's perfectly fine, though, because it's just something we're going to do. And the reason this is so incredibly wild now, of course, if you shut off orthographic projection, you're going to get something that looks a little bit like that. And it's going to make you a little insane because your brain's going to tell you it's curved, but it's not actually curved. It's because we're not perfectly centered on it, and you can see exactly how well. it will make you absolutely mad sometimes kind of doing this. But the cool thing is, once you have a general size here, the greatest thing is if you bring up the fuselage editor, you can just literally tap the S key and rip just like that. And then the nice thing is after you do that, you can start kind of playing with it a little bit until you get it the way you want. And once you have it the way you want, it's just a matter of grabbing your fuselage, hitting that level extend button, and look at that. And we just pull that sucker straight back. Coming up on the top, of course, so we can see uh, just how close or not close we are. And all we have to do, like I said, that orthographic projection mode is your best friend. Look at how close we are. Um, this is like... I'm halfway done the airplane and I haven't even done anything yet. I can even grab this one. Again, this is a great thing about being a tube, by the way. Hey, <laughs> look at that. I can drag that tube right there. I can even press the extend fuselage button. I can drag this tube to about that one. Now, one of the tricks, by the way, is when you're using scale, hold your mouse over here before you hit it. Hit it. And look at this. I just squeeze it a little bit. And look at how nice and neat this aircraft is. And I haven't even done anything yet. Obviously, there's this uh, very, very long component across the back that I need to customize. The other thing I noticed, too, is as I'm looking at it from the side, I know that this has the entire uh, fuselage actually has to come up a teeny tiny bit. But look at how simple it was just to go ahead and get started. I mean, just look at that. I've got, you know, maybe 45 minutes more work and I'll have almost a complete working airplane. Now, for people who are worried about this front view here where everything's cut off, by the way, not a problem, because remember, we can always take this drawing and mirror it to the other side if we need to for the purposes of drawing the other side. But the realistic part is you're probably going to be using symmetry anyway when you're building this long wing. Uh, one more thing I'll add to, and I've already had plenty, sorry, is on the bottom of these, you'll see these little marks here, and uh, these represent where the wheels are. So if you ever have any doubt how to get your wheels in position, a lot of times they'll actually draw those wheels for you. So you can see how many bogeys we have on this side, and you can see the exact position of the wheels on this side. Enjoy.